Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 29th of November. India offers for $50 million development anti-terror aid to Lanka. Trump announces resumption of peace talks with Afghan Taliban. And Dalai Lama says in good health, why hurry for reincarnation? And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, after holding talks with Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Friday, extended around 450 million US dollar aid for counter-terrorism and development of the island nation. The newly elected Sri Lankan president arrived in India on Thursday evening for his first official state visit. Newly elected Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa was accorded a ceremonial welcome in Indian capital New Delhi on Friday. Rajpaksa, who arrived in India on Thursday for his first state visit, was received by his Indian counterpart Ramnath Govind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the Indian Presidential Palace, where he also inspected a guard of honour. The Sri Lankan President later held wide-ranging talks with Prime Minister Modi during which both the leaders discussed ways to boost security and economic cooperation. In a joint press conference, Modi announced 400 million US dollars of line of credit to further boost Sri Lanka's development. He also announced a financial assistance of 50 million dollars to Sri Lanka to deal with the challenge of terrorism. Modi said a stable Sri Lanka is not only in interest of India but for the entire Indian Ocean region. 400 million dollar ki ek nayi line of credit se Sri Lanka mein infrastructure aur vikas ko bal milega. Mujhe vishwas hai ki isse Sri Lanka ki arthavyavastha ko lab pahunchega saath hi ya line of credit dono deshon ke beech parasparik lab ke project cooperation ko bhi gati degi. Since our recent experience in April this year, we have had to rethink our national security strategies and assistance from India in this regard would be most appreciated. Rajpaksa also met India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Friday and discussed a range of bilateral and regional issues. A former Defence Secretary, Rajpaksa, is credited for ending years-long civil war in Sri Lanka. He was sworn in as the island nation's president on November 18, a day after he won the closely fought presidential election. India on Thursday launched a scathing attack on Pakistan over its statement on the verdict in Ayodhya land dispute case at a UN session in Geneva. Indian diplomat Vimarsh Aryan said Pakistan is merely spewing lies for self-serving, mendacious propaganda. India on Thursday slammed Pakistan over its statement at a UN session in Geneva on Supreme Court's verdict on Ayodhya land dispute case and asked the country to rather work constructively for upliftment of its own minorities instead of spewing lies for a self-serving malicious propaganda. Exercising India's right to reply in response to Pakistan's statement at the 12th session of Forum of Minority Issues Indian diplomat Vimarsh Aryan termed comments by Pakistan as unwarranted and further said that the issue is private and that Pakistan should have no say in it. We ask Pakistan that instead of squandering the opportunity to deliberate upon rights of minorities by disinforming and miseducating this forum, work constructively and positively for education and upliftment of minorities in Pakistan. The world does not need lessons of human rights of minorities from a country whose own citizens as well as minorities have never enjoyed true democracy. 
the Indian diplomat also highlighted that the religious, ethnic, sectarian and linguistic minorities in Pakistan have suffered an immense infringement of their fundamental human rights due to the so-called blasphemy laws. Moving on, Pakistan in recent months has been witnessing economic challenges owing to its incompetent policies. The spiraling inflation has now become the biggest problem haunting the people of illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan, which has severely hit their domestic budgets. Residents in illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan are facing immense difficulties due to the consistent increase in inflation rates. A sharp rise in food and transportation costs have severely hit the domestic budgets of people in the region. Locals have accused the establishment and Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan of being apathetic towards their plight and making tall claims of bringing prosperity. With harsh winters already setting in, firewood stoves become a necessity of life. But due to high price of firewood, residents of Gilgit, Baltistan look worried. Shopkeepers, who are already worried as inflation is failing their businesses, said that Price Control Committee have failed to regulate prices. पड़े हुए जब से ये खान साहब की हुकूमत जो है चढ़ी हुई है उस वजह से जो है काफी ज्यादा जो है असरात पड़ रहे हैं तो आजकल तो बाकी बंदा खुराक भी नहीं पूरी कर सकते जो चीज मिसाल के तौर पर जो पहले ये लोग 200 300 की दे रहे थे तो वो 7 800 से नीचे की अभी बात नहीं कर रहे जब के इस हवाले से शहरियों का भी ये मुतालिबा है कि यहां की जो जिले इंतजामिया है और प्राइस कंट्रोल कमेटी है वो इस हवाले से कोई एक्शन नहीं ले रही है सरदू की आमद के साथ ही यहां पे जो एलपीजी गैस है और चूंकि सोखनी जो लकड़ी है उसकी कीमतों में भी बेताजा इजाफा हुआ है लेकिन इस हवाले से कोई भी हुकूमत का पुरसान हाल नहीं है जब के हुकूमत को एक्शन लेने के लिए तैयार नहीं लिहाजा हम अपील करते हैं हुकूमत से कि वो इस सिलसिले में कोई कार्रवाई करे और महंगाई के इस बेकाबू जिनको काबू करे और आवाम को रिलीफ फ्राहम करे Pakistan in recent months has been witnessing economic challenges in owing to its incompetent policies. However, this occupied region, which is already marginalized, has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes and high inflation. In news from Afghanistan, the United States President Donald Trump on Thursday paid a surprise Thanksgiving visit to meet U.S. troops in Afghanistan, where he announced the U.S. and Taliban have been engaged in peace talks. He said he believes the Taliban wants a ceasefire. United States President Donald Trump made a surprise Thanksgiving visit to U.S. troops in Afghanistan on Thursday, where he said he believes the Taliban wants a ceasefire. Trump arrived at the Bagram airfield accompanied by White House National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, a small group of aides, secret service agents and a pool of reporters. He also met Afghan President Ashraf Ghani at the airfield. It is Trump's first visit to Afghanistan since becoming president and came a week after a prisoner swap between Washington and Kabul that has raised hopes for a revival of peace agreement. The Taliban wants to make a deal, and we're meeting with them, and we're saying it has to be a ceasefire. They didn't want to do a ceasefire, but now they do want to do a ceasefire, I believe. it probably work out that way, and uh, we'll see what happens. But we've made tremendous progress. Trump had abruptly broke off peace talks with the Taliban in September after a suicide bombing claimed by the group killed a U.S. soldier and 11 others. The U.S. and international forces have been in Afghanistan after the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks in the United States by al-Qaeda extremists, which were protected by the Taliban. In news from Maldives, former Maldives President Abdullah Yamin was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison for money laundering on Thursday. He was accused of receiving $1 million of government money through a private company as part of a deal to lease a number of tropical islands for hotel development. Former Maldives President Abdullah Yamin was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison for money laundering on Thursday. Yamin was accused of receiving $1 million of government money through a private company as part of a deal to lease a number of tropical islands for hotel development. He has dismissed the charges. Widely accused of crushing dissent in the archipelago, Yamin was also ordered by the court in capital Mali to pay a fine of $5 million. 
Yamin, who ran the Maldives with an iron hand for five years, unexpectedly lost an election last year and has since faced investigations over a number of deals sealed during his tenure. He is also accused of giving contracts to Chinese companies at inflated prices. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepalese President Vidya Devi Bhandari on Thursday visited Prime Minister K.P. Sharma, who is admitted in a hospital in capital Kathmandu since November 26. President Bhandari took an update on PM Oli's health condition and wished him speedy recovery. 67-year-old Oli was rushed to hospital after he complained of stomach ache. The Prime Minister underwent an appendicitis surgery and was kept on the ventilator. However, he was taken off from the ventilator after his condition significantly improved. Oli had been undergoing regular dialysis as his transplanted kidney had stopped functioning. In the past few weeks, Oli underwent four cycles of hemodialysis. He had underwent a kidney transplant in India in 2007 after both of his kidneys failed. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, presided over the valedictory session of the 14th Tibetan Religious Conference in Northern Hill Town of Dharamshala on Friday. Addressing the religious heads and dignitaries of the Central Tibetan Administration, he said that he was in good health and thus there was no hurry for him to announce his reincarnation. Tibetan spiritual leader and Nobel laureate, the Dalai Lama, presided over the valedictory session of the 14th Tibetan Religious Conference on Friday as the key honored guest. The 14th Dalai Lama, while addressing the religious heads, including heads of various monasteries across the globe and dignitaries of the Central Tibetan Administration, said he was in good health and thus there was no hurry for him to announce his reincarnation. The three-day conference that concluded on Friday focused on the discussion and decision with a particular emphasis on discovery and recognition of the reincarnation of Dalai Lama. The conference was organized in Dharamsala by the Department of Religion and Culture of the Tibetan government in exile. The conference made sure it was clear that present Dalai Lama will have the sole authority in his reincarnation. This comes amid news that China might interfere in the selection of the next Dalai Lama. In an attempt to spread awareness on women's safety, a special women's patrol unit of Delhi police is riding color-coded pink scooters with pink helmets in the Indian capital. The 16-member team is tasked with preventing crimes against women in vulnerable parts of the city. Delhi police's special women's patrol unit is riding color-coded pink scooters with pink helmet in the Indian capital to spread awareness on women's safety. The initiative by the Delhi police was launched in September, where 16 women constables trained in armed combat were handpicked for the job. The patrolling unit's arsenal include chili powder, spy camera and pepper spray. जब हम अपना मैसेज पब्लिक में ये पास करते हैं कि हम आपके लिए पेट्रोलिंग कर रहे हैं जो टाइमिंग स्कूल टाइम है लेडीज पे जो कमेंट पास करते हैं उस थोड़ा सा एक डर का भाव पैदा हो कि भाई आप ऐसा करोगे तो ऐसा हो जाएगा उद्देश्य यही है कि किसी भी तरह की छेड़छाड़ महिलाओं के साथ जो किसी भी तरह का उत्पीड़न है और ऐसे एरिया हैं जहां पर कॉलेज स्कूल और बैंक के पास क्राउड होता है जहां पर लड़कियों के छेड़छाड़ की संभावनाएं ज्यादा हैं लड़कियों की कॉलेज गोइंग है स्कूल गोइंग है छोटे छोटे बच्चे हैं Nearly half of New Delhi's some 26 million population are women. Gender crime has become a serious political issue in Delhi since 2012 when the gang rape of a 23-year-old woman brought thousands of people onto city streets in protest. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India offers $450 million development anti-terror aid to Lanka. Trump announces resumption of peace talks with Afghan Taliban. And Dalai Lama says in good health, why hurry for reincarnation? Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia News Line. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.